We all feel we know a lot about Hollywood and a lot about entertainment because we know who celebrities are, but do we really know how it works? Everybody knows about hashtag Oscar so white, but there are issues with discrimination and representation in other fields within the Hollywood industrial complex. Or in places like in paparazzi where it's predominantly Latinx folks. Paparazzi debate is nothing new, but today two very famous moms tried a new tactic. California specifically has had new anti-paparazzi legislation over the last several years. The person who took that photo can be charged directly. But if that photo is sold to a magazine and the magazine publishes it, the magazine doesn't have any responsibility. And it's this very specific targeting of the paparazzi who are predominantly Latino in these very particular ways. Even where there is so-called diversity, that they're still treated poorly. It's against the law! If you think about what paparazzi symbolize, like when there's a paparazzo somewhere, people know that there's a celebrity there. The presence of a paparazzo is what lets people know that you're important, that we love to see pictures of celebrities, you know, at Starbucks or in the grocery store, and yet we hate the people who take the photos. There was a paparazzi run over here? So, so what can you tell us? I just came to pay my respect to him because he was a great kid. He was just a kid. It was a chase for a superstar's photo that ended the 29-year-old life of photographer Chris Guerra. I met Chris Guerra in the fall of 2012. When Guerra did walk back to his car, police say he was fatally hit by an SUV. The details around his killing were quite murky. Now to the Me Too movement growing this morning in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein scandal. Women who work as celebrity reporters face a lot of particular challenges. Being on the job, reporting on powerful men. The Me Too campaign was first created by Tarana Burke 10 years ago to aid sexual assault survivors in underprivileged communities. This is not about me, it's about survivors. It came out in the entertainment industry because abuse of power is so prevalent. Very often powerful men exercising this power over women who are in subordinate kinds of positions. It could hurt my career, I could lose my job. And as women working in this profession that ultimately is to serve celebrities. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the <laughs> I can do anything. Natasha Stoinoff in Mar-a-Lago. Donna wanted to show her around the compound, and so he took her into a room and closed the door, and then he threw her up against the wall and kissed her against her will. I met Natasha Stoinoff when I started my internship with People Magazine. We had a very close relationship and confided in me when she was reporting on Donald Trump. She was sexually assaulted. I wasn't brave enough yet to, to be on camera. The women reporters and the Latino paparazzi who I worked with and who I write about in the book, they reflect really deeply on the fact that they know they're promoting impossible beauty ideals and they know that they're promoting this really sort of white dominant culture. I want to recognize the particular kinds of agency that these different media producers have and acknowledge how important their role is. The reason why manufacture works is because there's a certain way in which this is an existing machine. It's not necessarily what they would want. They understand their role in this larger cultural structure. 